If there's one thing that I love just as much as hardstyle, it is influencer boxing. So today, we're going to switch things up and we're going to react to the top 20 YouTube boxing knockouts. All right, here we go. Honorable mention. Oh, here it is. KSI versus Joe Weller. Okay. Oh, big shot. Oh, oh. Yeah. Joe Weller just could not keep up with KSI. Oh, fuck off, Carl Freezy. You know what? Even though it's not like a, an actual knockout, it's a it's a TKO. It was a very uh, clinical way to end the fight. A very prominent way to win the fight for KSI. I was one of the people that thought Joe Weller would win. You know, he was just in shape. He just looked the part. But as we all know, in boxing, you can't just look the part. Fousey tube. Well, this is it now. Number 20. It's going to be Dean the Great. Oh! Versus Evil Hero. Now, this is a mismatch. But no one knew it at the time. Oh! Oh! He's so wobbly, look at him. But he's still in there. Oh, oh! Woo! And that's it now. Surely. Yeah, referee waves it off. So again, oh, yep, and he tried to backflip for a celebration and just landed on his neck. Could have been very serious there, but it wasn't too bad. So we can all laugh about it. Anyways, evil hero. I don't know why I'm, okay, no, I don't want to be mean, but why is this guy even here? He had a fight with Adam Sala on the Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury undercard. And he looks like he hasn't boxed a day in his life. I don't know what is going on with this guy. Now, Dean the Great has really proved himself as one of the better boxers in this YouTube space. So, I mean, this was his first appearance though. At least from what I could tell. He had a few maybe smaller boxing incidents, but Dean the Great versus Evil Hero was the start of Dean the Great properly. And, I mean, ever since then, he just went higher and higher, so fair play to him. But Evil Hero was dog shit. Okay, number 19. Here we go. KSI versus Swarms. Yeah, I mean, this was only going to end one way, wasn't it? Oh! And it, it, from that point, he's like, nah, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Not a chance, mate. Yeah. Nah. It's over, it's over. He, do, he, he, like, considers it. He's like, oh, should I get up? But he knows deep down. He's like, I cannot keep going. There's just no way. Just easy work for KSI. And, I mean, we all seen that coming. Uh, I mean, the whole two fights in one night thing for KSI was interesting, but Swarms as one of the opponents was just like, okay, bro. I mean, we all know how this is going, so. But fair play to Swarms. He uh, beat Ryan Taylor with one punch in his most recent fight, so he really stepped up the levels there, didn't he? Come on, come on, let's see some bangers. We need some clinical KO. Oh, this was. Just listen to this one. This is scary. And he keeps going. Yo! Ginty was already out from that first punch. You saw it in his eyes. He was still standing, but he was on his way down. And you just know he's seeing stars after that. And you know what? I have probably the most respect for Ginty out of most of these YouTube boxers because he actually stepped in the ring with JMX. Like, that is crazy. If you know JMX, you know he's been in the game, in the boxing game since... I think KSI versus, was it Joe Weller? If not, then it was KSI versus Logan Paul, the first one in 2018. And you know he is one of the, the better guys in the scene as well. So, yeah, tough, tough fight for Ginty, but massive bollocks for actually stepping in the ring with JMX. But let's look at that one more time. Let's really break this down. So, JMX cracks him with a banger. Boom. Okay, from that point, he's already out. JMX missed that left, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But then the right is coming. Oh, this is... This is tough. Let's slow it down as well. So the right hand comes in. Boom! And then from that point, it's just... It's done. It's done. If it wasn't done from the first shot, then... Then it's definitely done from this shot. And then... The left. Boom! And then you can see it in his face. He is just gone. I wonder what he was actually seeing right there. Because he, he is like... 
technically unconscious, but he's still standing like this is fucked. And then, does he hit- Look, you look right there, right there, right there. He is like, looking into the devil right now. He's looking at his fucking face. Oh my god! And then one more comes in as well, and it's not even over. Boom! Oh! Jesus! Oh my god! And to be fair, the way he fell, like, he didn't- He still didn't get, like, slumped, you know what I mean? He could still, like, land on his hands and knees, so... Genty's tough, I'm telling you. But he actually knocked down JMX in this fight as well. Like, we were all just sitting there waiting for Genty to get fucking slept, alright? And I was, like, just, you know, nervously biting my nails, biting my tongue, waiting for that to happen. And then Genty actually knocked down JMX before this fateful KO. So, he did a lot better than expected. And he actually got a lot of stick in his most recent fight against Halal Han, which I don't understand. Even Mams Taylor, one of the guys that runs Misfits, said, Oh, don't come on and fight for us if you're not going to throw any punches. Bro, what? He knocked him down! I think. Oh, yeah, and then later that night, King Kenny, one of the, oh, one of the top guys in this scene, just danced around the ring and just didn't throw anything. Did not throw anything. But what did Mams Taylor have to say about that? Absolutely squat. So, but that's because King Kenny is meant to be like, you know, one of the best and one of the most respected fighters. But he didn't do shit. And everyone was just like, oh no, he was he was really good at defense. He didn't even, Ashley Raksu still broke his defense. Like, what the fuck? Oh, but he, he looks like a professional boxer. He, okay, good. Okay, so he's got, he's got a stance of a boxer. That's great. There's step one. Congratulations. Anyways. Let's keep going. He got up as well. So yeah, it could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. Number 17. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. I feel bad watching this because... Yeah. Panetta got smoked. But he is good. Like, if you've seen Panetta in his recent fights, he is a good, solid boxer, but KSI did make easy work of him. That was a nice wee combo as well to finish the job. Look at this. KSI comes in. It's all the other oh, oh. It was a shame as well because Panetta, for some reason, was complaining about getting hit in the back of the head, even though he just wasn't. And then True Jordy on commentary was like, this is a fucking joke. And it was just a shambles. Like, it was really really shitty to watch, you know? But the Panetta redemption story has been incredible, so fair play to him. Ramos! Number 16. Oh. You know, I've never got to watch this back because the footage is just so hard to find. Oh my God. But he really did make, <laughs> make this look easy. Yeah. After this, oh. Okay, why'd he throw him down? No, come on. That was how it actually ended, though. After that, though, I thought Austin McBroom was going to be a serious, serious problem in the YouTube boxing scene. And then Annie Son Gibb came along, knocked him down about seven times. And I was like, oh shit, okay, maybe Austin isn't all that. But I know that Austin is good. But I also know for a fact that he didn't take Annie Son Gibb seriously. So that... I mean, he wasn't ready for it. He thought he was. He thought Gibb was going to be like the way he was when he fought Jake Paul. He's going to be terrible. But no. But no. Number 15. King Kenny versus DK Money. Okay, this is good. From Kenny. Yeah, boom. Oh, oh he's wobbly. And again. Oh! Nice sweet jab. But again, it's... It didn't take much. No offense to DK Money, but... He's not... He's not great. He went the distance with Nick Ireland, one of the Ireland boys, and he looked okay there, but yeah, King Kenny, I said he was bad before. There still is levels to the, the, the influencer boxing scene. DK Money is like very, very bad, and King Kenny is like bad. So, right then, number 14. Here we got Jarvis versus Michael Lee. Michael Lee's swing of the fences, but Jarvis, oh my god! That was the first and last time that we saw Jarvis in a boxing ring and he is a part of this new Kingpin tournament. So we'll see if he's improved in any way, shape or form. I mean, it was already two years ago to be fair, but oh, here it is. 
Jog Paul versus Arbison Dad of the Life. Shout out like that. You know what? Give you a. Okay. He caught Jake with a few shots, but ultimately he was just all over the place. And Jake made light work of any song give. Oh! Oh! And it was waved off. You know what? I still respect Jake for taking that fight in the first place because that was a big fight for him. Like, that was very risky. Looking back on it, it's like, nah, that was easy, but at the time, everyone was like, Jake Paul is getting smoked. This is it. That was his first professional fight as well. Everyone was like saying, oh, you're a pussy. You're too scared to fight Gabe. So he was like, all right, I'll fight Gabe. And he destroyed him. All right, then, number 12. Face sense. Oh, fucking overflow. What a joke. I don't know why this guy even got brought back recently. He just pisses me off. Nice body work though from Fia Sensei. That's how he ends it as well. Yeah, too much action going on down there. The wind got taken out of him and he was done for. But the reason why I don't like Overt Flow is because he just... He just seems to be in it for the money, you know? He came out against Fia's temper, took one fucking shot... And was like, alright, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I can't get up, can't get up from that. Like, f But again, though, I cannot really sit here and say stuff like that because I don't know what it's actually like to get a straight jab from Faze Temper. I don't know how Overflow was actually feeling, but it was just embarrassing. Like, just fuck off. Oh, dear. This was a very good knockout, though. But Charlie's is just trash. But it was actually, like, vicious, though. Ready? Ish, 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 ish. Oh! Holy shit. Right, we're into the top 10 now. And this is a good one. Not gonna say anything. Oh! Now that is just. He looks like a pro. Salt Poppy looks like a pro. My friends. And you just know. Josh was feeling sick after that. That's one of them KOs where the wind would get taken right out of you. The way he landed, his whole body just rocked. He would have been like, oh, fuck me. I'm not getting up from that. It was so unexpected as well. Like, I never thought Josh Bruckner would just get dropped like that. But the technique, the skill, the accuracy, the power of Salt Pappy was too much to handle. Look at this on the counter as well. Josh comes in for it. Jesus. Ridiculous. Outrageous. From Saul Pappy. And I thought Josh would win as well. I didn't think Saul Pappy was all that, but he really is. Okay, Dana Wally, this is a big deal. Oh, Dane gets dropped. Takes two big shots there, but he gets up. He's good. He comes back. Gets dropped again. Still stands up, still keeps fighting. And then where's the big finale? Oh shit! You think Waleed would finish him, but no! Dean the Great comes back after two knockdowns and absolutely rocks Waleed Shark, who then just can't continue. I mean, he probably could, but he turned his back, he went to the ropes, he needed that break, which you just can't get in boxing until the round's over. So yeah, this is why people are calling for a rematch because Waleed was dominating the fight. But people need to understand like how mad that is for Dean to come back after two knockdowns and then win by way of knockout. Like what the fuck? Still probably the best in that division. Anyways, number eight. Slim versus Abidam. Oh, this is one of his earlier fights. Oh! Oh! That was a class knockout! And I've never watched back any of Slim's fights. He is now one of the best in the scene. But back then, he was just trying to make a name for himself. And he clearly was good, but no one cared. Like, no one cared. Myself included. Alright then, number seven. What do we have? Oh, Saul Pappy again. This was clean. Andy Worski is shit, but watch this. Oh! And that's the first time where everyone's like, okay, Saul Pappy is something else. Saul Pappy may 
That was ridiculous. The combo as well, he was rocking his head, left and right. Jesus. But Andy Warski was a shite fighter anyway, so... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Nate Robinson, the basketball player, versus Jake Paul. Gets knocked down once there, but still gets up from that. That's kind of surprising. Jesus! And that's still not it either. He gets up as well. Yo, fair play for that, but... It probably should have ended earlier, because then this happens, yep, and he gets slumped. There's a proper knockout now. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Hope we never see him in the boxing ring again. Oh, here we are with Austin and Gabe. Oh, big knockdown from Austin. Austin gets over him, you know. But maybe he does regret squaring up to Gabe, because he gets two knockdowns. There he falls outside the ring. Oh my god. And again, big uppercut, just keeps going, oh my god. Yo, this is actually such an entertaining fight to watch. Just because it kept going, and again, look at him walk, he's just, like, it should be done. He gets up again though. Austin's still trying to fight for and he gets one last big punch. And he just can't get up from that, that's like five knockdowns, what the hell. But fair play for Austin, you know, for hanging in there. Then <laughs> Ashton can, can go and fuck himself as well. Yeah, this guy's a joke. Yeah, see you later. All he wanted was the money. And yeah, Jake's like, oh, I fucking did it. But he's just, he, Ben Askren is shite. Unbelievably shite. Anyways, this is the start of Slim. Oh, shit. Did you see the eyes of Fierce Tamper as well? He did not know what hit him there. And Slim doesn't really look like he would have that knockout power. He is a skinny guy. But the clues in the name. Slim, the hitman. Al Bahar. He is one of those ones to watch. Cars in FIFA. You just wouldn't expect him to have that power, that skill. But he comes in just leveling Temper. And then that big right hand comes when, when Tommy drops his hands. And that's it. Massive knockout. What a win. I thought Temper had that in the bag. I thought it was going to be an easy night for a phase temper, but boy was I wrong. Number two now, it's KSI, it's phase temper. Sets it up. Oh! Now that was very, very impressive. The way he did that. Like, and it's such a shame because temper is good. But KSI, he says it himself, he is levels above everyone on this scene and you know what people say his ego is massive and whatnot but i mean who else is doing that to face tamper jake paul could do that to face tamper but saw Papi could do that to face tamper but slim <laughs> but this is it the number one knockout in youtube box it yep wow that's it I mean, maybe there were some copyright issues, but the number one knockout just happened within a flash. But, as for the knockout itself, it was very, very impressive. It's Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley, their second fight, and he absolutely rocks Tyron Woodley with just a vicious overhand right. So what happens here is that Jake fakes the body shot. Tyron drops his hands, and that opens up that perfect opportunity for that overhand right to come flying in, and just, oh, the power behind it, oh, crazy. Looks at the body, look at that, he's going for the body, he is going for the body at this stage, or so we all think, right? And that's what Tyron thinks, his hands are here, and he's like, oh shit, I've got to protect myself, he's going to drop the hands, and then the right hand comes in. Bang! Incredible! And you just know when his arms go by, this, by his sides like that, you know he is gone. Look at the rest face. He's like, oh shit. Jake's like, what the fuck? And that just showed you everyone that Jake Paul is a fucking threat in the YouTube boxing space. Well, the crossover boxing space. Because Jake Paul doesn't just stick to influencers. You know, he has mainly been going for MMA fighters. Of course, he actually went and he tested himself against... A, a, a professional boxer, a young professional boxer in Tommy TNT Fury, but he got his shit rocked uh, in that fight, and that was a big wake-up call to Jake Paul. He thought Tommy Fury would just be shit, you know, Timmy fumbles and whatever, but no, sir. 
No, sir. He could not keep up with Tommy Fury and it was clear from round one. Although, he did catch Tommy with a few good shots and he even knocked him down. So, you know, Jake has shown that he is a decent boxer. But, maybe, maybe it is best to just stick to the influencer boxing. I don't know if he can challenge for world titles or whatever. So, anyways, that's going to be it for the top 20 YouTube, bo well, influencer boxing knockouts, crossover boxing knockouts, whatever, whatever, the 5th of November. We have influencer boxing events happening pretty much every month with Misfits. We have this Kingpin tournament coming up with, you know, King Kenny, Anison Gibb, so many fighters on there. So I'm sure we will see plenty more knockouts in this crossover boxing space in the very, very near future. But that is it for now. I know it's been a different video, but it's been such a fun video, at least for me, because I love this. I love influencer boxing. I love clinical knockouts, clinical finishes to the matches. And yeah, it's just so much fun. <laughs>